Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Hope you guys are all doing super, super well. So today we're gonna be talking about what happened to Vanessa Morales and Christine Holloway. Vanessa's aunt Danielle has a TikTok where she posts updates about this case and that's how I found out about this. So many of you guys were tagging me in her videos and I literally watched every single one of them. I literally just got the chills thinking about her videos because what happened to Vanessa and Christine is incredibly unfair and this family really needs help getting justice. So I hope by making this video I can help spread more awareness about this case. So yeah, that's pretty much what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Again, if there's any other cases you guys want me to cover, you guys can tag me on TikTok, you can send it to me through Instagram, or you can submit it through my case form that will be linked down below. All right, I think that's pretty much all I have to say. Thank you guys so much for being here, and let's jump right into today's video. So Vanessa Morales was born on September 7, 2018. She lived in Ansonia, Connecticut with her then 43-year-old mother, Christine Holloway. Now a little bit of background on Christine, she had graduated from the Southern Connecticut State University and she was now working as a daycare associate at the Bright Morning Star Daycare. Christine absolutely loved children and she always wanted to have a child of her own. She was committed to being a great mother, so when she got pregnant in 2018 and gave birth to Vanessa, she was extremely happy and felt so grateful that her dream of becoming a mother was finally coming true. And Vanessa is such a cute baby, you guys. Like seriously, I just wanna smile looking at photos and videos of her. Since Christine worked at a daycare, she was able to bring Vanessa to work with her every single day, so it worked out perfectly. So Vanessa's father was a man named Jose Morales. He's from Puerto Rico and him and Christine met on an online dating website. I'm not sure how long they were dating before Vanessa was born, but after her birth, Jose and Christine were not living together, but they were still in a relationship. They were boyfriend and girlfriend and they were raising Vanessa together, but in separate homes. So from Friday to Monday morning, Jose would go stay over at Christine's apartment with Vanessa. Other days, Christine would go stay at Jose's family home with with Vanessa so they had their own little system going on. So then on Monday December 2nd 2019 noon had rolled around and Christine had still not shown up for her shift at the daycare. One of her co-workers named Rosie Clark started to get worried. It wasn't like Christine to be late and not notify anyone about it. So Rosie and some of the other co-workers started calling Christine but all of their calls went straight to voicemail. This is when they all started to get worried, so Rosie decided to call the Insonia Police Department and request a welfare check at Christine's home. At around 12.59 p.m., Officer Kelly responds to this call and heads over to Christine's apartment. When he gets there, he starts knocking on the door and calling for Christine. No one answers the door and he doesn't hear any movement from the inside, so he starts tapping on the windows. He's trying to peek inside, but it's completely silent. Since he sees no movement inside, he decides to clear the scene and at around 1.04 p.m. he leaves Christine's apartment. The officer calls Rosie and lets her know that he wasn't able to make any contact with Christine but to give them a call back if she still doesn't show up. So a couple of hours go by and there's still no sign of Christine or Vanessa. At this point, Christine's family starting to get worried because this was unlike Christine. She would call the family every single day to check in on them, to talk about her day, to talk about Vanessa. So they all thought it was very weird that she hadn't called anyone at all. At around 3 p.m., some of her family members head over to Christine's apartment to see if she was there and they get there. They're knocking on the door, they're calling out for her, but no one answers the door. They see that Christine's car isn't in the driveway, so they're thinking maybe she's out somewhere, maybe she doesn't have her phone. So they decide to leave and wait a couple of hours to see if she reappears. Meanwhile, they're calling other family members to see if they have seen or spoken to Christine that day, but no one had. So two hours later at around 5 p.m., Christine's family decides to go back to the apartment to see if she had appeared, but she hadn't. This is when they decide to go over to Jose's house in New Haven, Connecticut to see if Christine or Vanessa were there. 
When they get there, Jose says that he has not seen Vanessa or Christine since that morning at 7 a.m. He was at Christine's house that morning and he saw Christine getting ready for work and putting Vanessa in the car, you know, getting ready for her day. Then he saw Christine and Vanessa drive away and that was it. He hasn't seen or spoken to her since earlier that morning. He had also been trying to call her throughout the day, but she wasn't answering, so he just figured she was busy at work. This is when Christine's family really starts to panic I mean, everyone was really starting to get worried. So at around 7.30 p.m., Christine's brother Steve and his girlfriend Jody go to the police department and tell them what's happening. An officer Smith takes on the case and he calls Christine's cell phone, but again, it goes straight to voicemail. Then he decides to call Jose to hear his side of the story. And at first, Jose tells the officer exactly what he told the family earlier. He says that he saw Christine at her apartment at 7 o'clock this morning and that that was it. But I'm not sure if maybe Officer Smith didn't really believe him, but he continued to press Jose, and that's when Jose changed his story. He says that he only spoke to Christine on the phone that morning, but he hadn't physically seen her since Friday. So now police and the family are like, huh? Like, how did your story randomly change? Like, how did you think you saw her this morning at seven o'clock, but now you're saying you didn't see her, but you spoke on the phone with her? So police decided to go back to Christine's apartment and they're asking the neighbors if they have seen Christine or Vanessa at all. One of the neighbors says that he hasn't seen Christine or Vanessa, but he did see Jose leaving Christine's apartment earlier that afternoon. This all seemed suspicious to police, so this is when they decided to make a forced entry into Christine's apartment. They get inside her apartment, they're looking around, and everything seems to be in order until they got into the bathroom. When police walked inside the bathroom, that's when they found the lifeless body of Christine Holloway. I don't want to get into too many details about the condition of her body, but police did find some hair in Christine's hand. This indicated to police that Christine fought her attacker. She defended herself, she fought back, she was pulling this attacker's hair, she was trying to do everything she could to save her life. So police take this hair into evidence and send it off to a forensics lab. Now police know that Christine has a one-year-old baby, so they look around the apartment, but there's no sign of Vanessa. This is when police decide to issue a silver alert, which was eventually turned into an amber alert, and begin to investigate the case. Not only do they have a mother that was brutally murdered, but they also have a baby that is missing. So the next day on December 3rd, police head over to Jose's home where he lived with his stepfather Marcos and his mother Lydia. They get inside the house and they tell Jose he needs to go with them to the police station to talk about Christine and Vanessa. At this point, they didn't tell Jose or his family that Christine's body was found. All they said was that Christine and Vanessa were still missing. While they're waiting for Jose to get changed, police are speaking to Jose's stepfather Marcos and he tells police that Vanessa and Christine were at their house from Wednesday, November 27th to Friday, November 29th. They were there celebrating Thanksgiving with the family and then on Friday, Christine and Vanessa left to her apartment and Jose also went with them but in his own car. Then Jose hadn't reappeared till that day on Monday, December 2nd. So according to his parents, Jose was at Christine's apartment the entire weekend. So Jose finished getting dressed and he got inside the police car and they headed over to the station. When they get there, police begin to interview Jose and he says that after Christine and Vanessa left his house on Friday, he went to go hang out with his friend Hector all weekend long. Police ask him what Hector's name is, what his address is, his phone number, and Jose says he doesn't remember. Then he says he has no idea what happened to Christine or Vanessa, but that he hopes they turn up safely. Then the police seize Jose's clothing and they drive him back home. When they get back to his house, that's when police decide to tell Jose and his family that Christine's body has been found and that she was a victim of homicide. Marcos and Lydia immediately began to cry. They were extremely upset. They were shouting. Lydia began yelling at Jose, asking him if he had something to do with this, and Jose kept saying no. However, he didn't really seem too upset about this news. According to police, the only reaction he had was putting his head on one of his hands, but he never cried never had any type of outburst, nothing. His parents seemed more upset about the death of his girlfriend and the disappearance of his baby than Jose did. 
His parents loved Christine and Vanessa and they just couldn't believe that this had happened. They were still yelling at Jose and told him to just be honest and let them know what happened. But this is when Jose started to get mad at his parents and he just left the room. He left the room and went back down to the basement where he lived and didn't want to talk about it anymore. Um, police begin searching the house and this is when they find two stun guns which Jose is not allowed to have because he is a convicted felon. I'm not sure what he did but since he's not allowed to have these weapons, police arrest Jose. While he's in jail on these weapon charges, police continue to ask him about Christine's death and the whereabouts of his daughter Vanessa. This is when Jose says that yes, he was at Christine's house on Sunday, December 1st. He was in the bathroom at her apartment and he looked outside the window and saw two men running towards the front door. He says he was under the influence of PCP at the time, so his memory of this is a little bit blurry, but he says that he did try to call 911. While he was calling 911, he says that someone punched him in the face and knocked him unconscious. The next thing he remembers is waking up and he was driving back to his house in New Haven. He says that maybe the two men that were running towards the house had something to do with Christine's death, had something to do with the disappearance of his daughter. I mean, it's a pretty crazy story. He could have completely hallucinated this. He could have imagined that there were these men running towards his house since he was on drugs. So it was a really crazy story, but police decided to check this out and see if maybe this was true. They check Jose's cell phone records and they see that on Sunday, December 1st at around 1.52 p.m., a 911 call was made from Jose's phone. Police listen to the recording of this call and they hear the slurred voice of a male saying Myrtle Street. This is the street where Christine and Vanessa lived. Then in the background, they hear the voice of a female saying, stop, hang up, who are you calling? Then the phone call is disconnected. Now, I'm not sure if police have confirmed that this voice is 100% Jose's or if they've identified who this female's voice is. There really isn't a follow-up on this, but I mean, the fact that he says he called 911 on Sunday and there's proof that he called 911 and his phone at the time pinged at Christine's apartment, it's definitely weird. I'm not saying the story about the two men running towards the door is true. I really have no idea what happened with that. Maybe he did hallucinate that and that's why the female was saying stop like who are you calling hang up i'm not really sure but if there is more information about this phone call released in the future i will definitely let you guys know so going back to christine's family when they found out about her they were just completely heartbroken. They couldn't believe that this had happened to their loved one. When some of the family members went to Christine's apartment, they noticed that a few items belonging to Vanessa were missing. Her teething key ring, a white blanket with polka dots, a gray Eddie Bauer diaper bag, and her black car seat were nowhere to be found. This indicated to police and to the family that whoever took Vanessa had planned this. They made sure to take items that were used to care for Vanessa, so this gave the family hope that she was still alive and was with someone. They started passing out flyers and spreading Vanessa's photo all over social media, hoping someone would know where she was. And that's right, family members have met here on... Uh and then Sonia to spread the word about this. And I'm joined right now by Vanessa's cousin, Joshua. Joshua, tell us a little bit about what has been going through the family's mind these past few days. Um, it's very hard on my grandparents and I could only imagine the other side of the family. Um, we just want her home um, at any means necessary. Uh, we just want her home safe, healthy. I mean, Christmas is coming. Like, you know, she, she got to have her second Christmas. You know what I mean? And it's, it's cold out here. And it's, it's so much things going on in the world and we would never think it would happen to your own. It's just really sad. I cannot imagine being Christine's family and having to deal with the death of your loved one, but also having to look for a missing baby is just incredibly horrible. There was a memorial held for Christine and on December 11th, her funeral was held at a church in Bridgeport, Connecticut. 
Going back to the investigation, at this point, police have finally identified Jose's friend Hector, which I guess turned out to be a real person. They go interview Hector and he confirms that Jose was with him all weekend long. He says that on Monday, December 2nd, the day Christine's body was found, Jose had called him at around 4.32 p.m. When police asked him what this call entailed, Hector started to get very nervous, he was getting fidgety, he was trying to change the subject, but police were like, you need to be honest with us and tell us everything. And this is when Hector says that Jose told him, if someone asks where I was this weekend, tell them I was with you. So I guess this means that Hector lied to police and was covering for Jose. Like there really isn't a follow-up on this interview. As I mentioned earlier, there isn't much information about this case. So I'm not really sure what happened to Hector after this interview. Like did he get in trouble with police for lying? Like did they confront Jose about this? I'm not really sure. But this definitely proved to police that Jose was lying and was most likely at Christine's apartment the entire weekend. After this, police continue on with the investigation and they see that on Sunday, December 1st, surveillance footage caught Jose's car at a donation bin in Derby, Connecticut. Workers sorting through the items in this bin found several blood-stained items such as a puzzle, a man's shirt, and a children's book. So police head over to these bins and they check the blood found on these items and it comes back as Christine's. To add to that, the DNA results came back for the hair found in Christine's hand and it came back as a mix of Christine's hair and Jose's hair. So with all of that, on February 7th, 2020, police charged Jose Morales with the murder of Christine Holloway, tampering with evidence, and they also named him a suspect in the disappearance of his daughter Vanessa. At his court appearance, he states that he had nothing to do with Christine's murder or his daughter's disappearance. He pled not guilty to all the charges, including to the two felony charges of criminal possession of a firearm for the stun guns. The family and the police know that Jose was the last person with Vanessa and that he knows what happened to her. He knows where she is and they just want him to do the right thing and bring her home. This is just incredibly sad. I mean, not only was Vanessa's mother murdered by her own father, but then her father decided to give her away and send her to who knows where with who knows who and keep her away from her family. Watching the videos her Aunt Danielle posts on TikTok really makes you cry, you guys, because she looks so happy in these videos. She's having so much fun playing with her family. She's so full of life and it's not fair that her mother was murdered and now she's gone. It's really sad and it makes me want to cry because this beautiful little girl like has endured so much. I really hope she was not there when her mother was murdered. I really hope she didn't have to see that as this little girl and Christine did not deserve this.
I really pray and hope that Vanessa is still alive, that she's out there with someone that's taking care of her, that's giving her food, that she's healthy, that she's loved, and will hopefully be reunited with her family soon. Christine's family believes that Jose gave her to someone he trusts. Police have already checked with his family in Connecticut and his family in Puerto Rico, but they say that they do not have Vanessa. Unfortunately, there isn't a definite timeline of when things actually happened. The police were able to track him to certain locations. He did dispose of evidence in a donation bin, but they were only able to track him so far. We firmly believe he dropped Vanessa off with someone he knows and trusts. And ever since he's been in police custody, he hasn't really been giving solid answers to anything. His next court date, I know, is January 21st. So who knows who Jose could have given Vanessa to? I don't understand why he had to give away his daughter. As of today, in March of 2022, Vanessa Morales has still not been found. The items used to care for her have also not been found. To this day, the family is still hopeful that Vanessa is out there and that she's alive. They want whoever has Vanessa to know that if they return her back to the family safely and healthy, they won't call the police, they won't call the FBI, they will literally not do anything. They don't care who you are, they just want you to do the right thing and bring Vanessa home. There is a $10,000 reward being offered for any information leading to Vanessa's whereabouts. So please share her photo. Here's an age progress photo of Vanessa. Here's some flyers about her. So please share this as much as you can and give the family the help that they need to spread more awareness on this. Anyone with information about Vanessa is asked to call the Ansonia Police Department or the FBI. As I mentioned earlier, Vanessa's aunt Danielle has a TikTok account where she posts updates about Vanessa. That's actually how I found out about this case, so I will have that link down below so you guys can follow her and show her some support. There's also a Facebook page called Bringing Home Vanessa Morales, which will also be linked down below. Vanessa would have turned three in December and it's really sad that she's not able to celebrate this with her family and honestly I'm sending so much love and thoughts and prayers to Vanessa and Christine's family. I'm so sorry for your loss and I hope that Vanessa is found soon and that Christine gets the justice she deserves. That's pretty much all the information I have for today's video. If there are any updates on this case, I will of course let you guys know by putting it in a pinned comment in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and hearing Vanessa and Christine's story today. I really appreciate you guys being here and if there's any other cases you guys want me to cover in the future, make sure to submit it through my case suggestion form that will be in the description down below. Thank you guys again for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!